Yo, what's up? Good morning, rather. We are now outside of Mega Yule, and today I think I will try to make a vlog because every episode you see it's more a standardized test. I go to Nebenes, I do the range test, I do the charging test or whatever. So uh, now I want to make something different because sometimes I also get bored editing the same thing over and over and over again. I think you guys are also bored. So today I will try to make a a day of what I do, uh, the stuff that usually you, you don't see. So, okay, so again, we are here at Mega Yule and I want to change these rims. I've been changing them back and forth a little bit. So, uh, and now I also want to show you guys what they look like. These are the magnesium rims. Uh, in case you haven't seen them before, it looks freaking gorgeous. Forged magnesium, you can see it there. And this one, oh, I don't remember. I think it was 6,800 nook each. This is top of the crop. They weigh 7.9 kilos each. Uh, regular Tesla rims are usually uh, 12, 13 kilos each. So we're talking about four or five kilos of less, less weight. Talk about this before. What, uh, less, less, um, unsprung weight, less rotational mass, and you also want less mass on the outside. You want them, uh, at least if you can choose, you want the mass to be more towards the center of the hub. I mean, the hub, yeah. So, yeah, man, I tried some other cheap rims that first looked like these ones, but once I got, once I got them on, I saw that they didn't look nearly as nice as these mag rims. They're called mag 52. But the reason why I'm changing them or not don't want them is because these are 19 and personally for me, I think they have 19 is a little bit too noisy. I'm going to show you guys as much as I can what they look like. So the problem is that Model 3 doesn't have the best uh, soundproofing, something to do with the suspension. And the problem is that uh, the Model 3, unlike S and X, uh, the Model 3 is more susceptible to road noise. And we have bad rough tarmac in Norway. And that means that uh, most of the time it will it would be quite noisy inside the car. If you live in Denmark or Belgium, Netherlands, well, okay, maybe not Belgium, but France, where you have smooth asphalt, then you won't be too much bothered by it and you can you can use 19 or 20 inch just fine but in norway yeah so that's why i want to go for some 18 inch instead but <laughs> i was torn between this one and the 18 inch and i couldn't decide because after i got the new nrs brakes and the new brake rotors with extra uh, protection you see they look so nice now so shiny before the rotor was rusty and it ruined the whole impression, but now they, oh. So I want to ask you guys, do you like this shit? Huh? Well, okay, maybe it's too much sunlight here. Let me show you more on this side. This side is in the shade, so you see better. And I could also go on this side uh, to show you maybe, yeah, let me see. If I stand here, sorry. I'm trying to get the highlights out. It has been done. Now we have the satin black. Wait, did I say onyx black earlier? I asked them again, it's called satin black. Oh shit, it's a bit uh, dusty. It has been stored for a while. But these are Sox Turbine X satin black rims, 18 inch. And if you didn't know that this was Sox, you would say, oh, it's Tesla original because they look just like the Tesla rims the Tesla turbine. So if you have the Tesla logo in the center there, then they look just oh, more or less like them, at least at least from a distance. So these are the 18 inch and I chose to use them because of the noise comfort level. Also, they bounce uh, over bumps and potholes way better than the 19 inch. But I want to show you here, we have 19 inch uh, Sachs turbine again, same, but this is um, not what is it called again? That this color is um, a gunmetal. So you see, I'm thinking that because I have a white car without any chrome delete, 
the rims kind of just disappears. See, you know what I mean? Ah, oh, fossils. Oh. At least it wasn't being too noisy. But here, uh, the, the gunmetal brings out the detail in the rims. So I think gunmetal looks better on MC Hammer. What do you guys think? Well, maybe I should show from this angle. Okay, you see there? Gunmetal and Onyx Black. Well, sorry for the, the, refraction, the refraction in the bus here. This is hard to show you unless we do it inside with the cars, but whatever. But yeah, so. Mm, or the mag rims. I'm, I'm still waiting for the mag rims. 18 inch mag rims. <laughs> but okay, so now what I want to do is that, you know, I get the impression that this, the noise level has uh, been uh, improved for some reason. Just my impression. And when I tested the, these rims and this, these tires, I measured not that great noise level. It was okay. But once the, the, we, the rubber started wearing down a little bit, not much, just a little bit, it seems like some of the hard edges when they were brand new were just kind of uh, smoothing out a little bit. So I get the impression that the, the car is slightly more quiet now than before. So I just want to try and verify if, if my assumptions are correct or not. So this is what I use. It's a, it's a sound uh, measuring tool. And I can also record it as I record the data and then you plug it in here. Well, it's, it's funny, it's a USB uh, mini, right? But this is what I do. I drive to Klofta and then I measure the noise here. Yeah, for you guys who don't know, and I always, I always drive the same stretch. I will show you where it is. Exact same stretch here. I start there and then I drive here we're over the bridge here. Yeah. This is the exact same stretch. From this stretch, I measure the noise until here, here, this direction, every time on the right lane. Same for every car, same conditions. The only difference is that there's a little bit of wind maybe difference, but I've seen that the wind tends to blow this direction very, very often. Very, yeah, so. Let's do that. I'm going to go there and measure the noise and we find out how noisy is this. now done with the test and the noise test at Klofta so it's stored in my uh, device and I have to check it out once I'm home the values so I'm not sure if it was more quiet quieter or not um, you have to see but you guys remember uh, a little while ago I tested the, the the sunshade thing that was supposed to be perfect fit for the windows and it turns out that I got the wrong ones those are for model S <laughs> so I'm going back now to B good where I got them from and I will swap them with the correct ones because it's supposed to be perfect fit for model 3 so yes and also I think they want to show me some head-up display for model 3 ooh interesting We are now at, well, outside of Be Good. They, they are in here. There's just several businesses here. But 
I will show you briefly. This is so important, this head-up display that I have to make a separate video. So Beagood, they sell lots of accessories. It's almost like um, Evernex. You know, they sell lots of Tesla accessories. So, uh, well, okay, let me start with a not so interesting stuff first. You see, in previous videos, you saw that I used these covers and they weren't perfect fit. Apparently, I got the wrong set for, for this package. So this one is for Model 3, perfect fit. So this one will fit in the back here, for example. Well, I see, I don't own one. Here, you see? So finally, I can test it out properly. So I'll just leave it in the trunk. But the fun stuff is the head-up display. So here is one set. It has two types. It comes with a film. Uh, let me see. This is the unit. Well, let's just show. I'll bring this one. Okay. Let me show you here. So they have this <laughs> Be Good uh, stuff. And this guy, he has pimped up his car <laughs> a lot. You see in here, P3D, door seals. Uh, what else? Oh, <laughs> uh, carbon fiber look over here. Carbon fiber look there. Carbon. I like this one. The carbon fiber look on the dash because the, the wood stuff here in my car doesn't... Uh, yeah, oh, this also has a nice texture, see? Let me go inside. It has this nice texture. Wait, is it? It's, it's wrapped. Because there's another variant that is a hard shell. You just slap, slap on top of it. This is a wrap. Here also, it's wrapped this, this stuff. This is extra cup holder insert. I don't know what, what this is for. Maybe because the American cups are bigger than the European cups. Okay, wow, he, he just pimped up everything. Here we have sunglass holder, but the stuff you want to see is this. So when I press the brake, I have two different units now. This one is the one that reflects on the front windscreen. This one is comes with a glass. And if I press the brake, we have connected both of them. <laughs> but you will see that this one is just by default it looks like that and it's a little bit you see double on the one when okay oh i have to adjust it a little bit here kind of like this yeah but with this glass here or this one here that that comes with it you have to stick it there roughly and then it reflects but the stuff here will be in a separate video because it's so important that i need to uh, pull it out so uh, I'm going to do some uh, shooting here and then, yeah. That was pretty cool. I tested out the, the head-up display. I did a little uh, run. Uh, so you will have to watch another episode. I mean, a separate video about this thing, the head-up display. It's, um, it's interesting. And uh, the verdict is that it works great. And I like it. But I'm not sure if I want to get one because I already have scanned my Tesla and feel like my, yeah, the dashboard might be too clutterish. Plus that, even though it is possible to, to hook two in here in series, then I'm not sure if this lid will close. <laughs> yeah, so for now, I, I think uh, I will not use it. But at least I tried it. I might change my mind later. But what I do like though, what I kind of want is this thing here. Um, yeah, it's a little bit not perfect finish there, but who cares? Who cares? It looks like carbon fiber. Yeah, if you look at this one, the car also, I like the carbon fiber in the center console. These two together versus my car. Come on, open. Shit. There. Look, mine is like... Um, uh, okay, but I think I'm done here. Now, next place is... Well, I was, I was going to go home, but I think I need to cut my hair. What do you guys think? Yeah, let's go cut my hair.
We are now at Haugerud. I'm going to cut my hair here at uh, Haugerud Center. Yes, that's the place to be. And I don't know about you guys, but I always try to park the car as far away from everyone else as possible. So you see, here we have, in this stretch, we have no one parking here. So park here, don't park along with the other guys because then you might get dense. And oh yeah, now we can see better. Hmm, do you like that shit? Do you like that? Ah, uh, yeah. And for you guys to be like, ah, oh, Bjorn, you have curb rush. No, this is not curb rush. It's that paste they used for when they mount the, the tire on the rim. So it's definitely not curb rush. All these rims are in top-notch state. Maybe, maybe I can show you from this side. Maybe you see it better than the rims. Yeah, yeah. I kind of want the, the gun, what do you going to call it? The, the, the gray one, yes, gun metal. Mm. Okay, hair time. We are done. This is going to be my new look. Yeah, I just look five years younger now. I'm, I'm back to 25, yeah. That's how Asians work. But uh, in the back here, I forgot to tell you that I brought some extra stuff from uh, Be Good. Uh, the big box back there is um, a cover for the underside of the trunk. So it might uh, lower or dampen the noise a little bit and also it covers the sharp edges and it looks better. So I'm gonna try it, yes. Uh, it will be a separate video, not in this one. And here we have cabin filter. So this is the good shit from uh, be good they import it from it's, it's called ev tuning you can find it also from abstract ocean and this is you see when i shake it supposedly it has charcoal in here charcoal so um the one i have is not that advanced and uh, it's been a year since i replaced it last time and nowadays when when i enter the car actually even right now it's hard to show you, of course, but I smell this weird sour whatever or something. I don't know what it is, but it's weird and it could be moldy stuff or something. But I want to replace this and see how it goes. But I think before I do that, I want to get a PM 2.5 meter to see if it's better. Because, because when I drive behind diesel car, especially Volkswagen diesel, or in a tunnel or behind motorcycle i smell that shit in here but i didn't smell it when i use mc uh, when i use optimus prime because optimus prime has a uh, way better filtering hepa filter but this one hopefully i can get back to that we'll see we'll see but now uh, it's uh, 2 30 in the afternoon and i think i'm gonna go home and slack a bit yeah i haven't eaten breakfast yet I haven't eaten in uh, four, no, 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 six, almost 16 hours now, something, 15, 16 hours. I ate a little bit late yesterday, yeah. So I'm trying to do the IF intermittent fasting where you uh, don't eat in 16 hours. It has some good health benefits and also better for burning fat. So, yeah, let's get back home. <laughs> back home now in the garage and uh, yeah today I see that uh, we have driven 133 kilometers a little bit back and forth to Klöfta with some Autobahn and so on so we started with 70% and now we have 33% so we can just charge here no big deal but uh, no I just remember this box here uh, pit stop bill play route they gave it to me a long time ago and they said that this one uh, you just open the lid I open the lid now here's the lid huh? And um, then it's supposed to clean something. It's supposed to get rid of bad smell. So, you know what? I will just leave it here in the armrest in the, inside the car. And then I keep the air conditioning running until tonight. 
or maybe tomorrow morning I see but oh I have to check the noise result yeah we've been slacking a couple of hours and I checked the data from the noise test and you see we have slight better result at 80 kilometers per hour 100 was actually a little bit more but there's some some variation and then at 120 kilometers per hour was one decibel lower so actually I think this confirms my suspicions that if you wear down the tire a little bit you will get slightly better noise and this could also apply to other cars I've tested so for example I don't know if this is a coincidence but many cars I've tested they are branch banking new and then the tire might be noisier let's say Polestar was almost branch banking new but then the E2008 had uh, almost 6,000 kilometers on the odometer mm? Mm? now you guys can start speculating <laughs> so anyway I think that's gonna be it for this episode this vlog so if you like this kind of vlog I will try to make some more because I do lots of shit all the time every day that you guys usually never see you see me doing a range test a thousand kilometer challenge a ball on the box test but you don't see everything that goes on between them yeah so I guess that's it for now then hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later